Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a great start to the weekend. It is Saturday morning getting this update out of the way. And then we have a whole bunch of basketball games in the next two weeks, uh, two week days uh, for my kids. So a lot of uh, basketball, a lot of traveling, and a lot of uh, all that good dad stuff that makes life uh, worth living. So let's get about the market. So uh, market continues to be uh, market continues to be in an aggressive uh, spin cycle. Uh, more bank failures now they're starting to uh, to get pretty regular. Uh, it all started with SIVB and then spread to SBNY, uh, and now the new new saga of the two stocks of the day or stocks of the week uh, that really haven't been stocks of the week has been stocks for a while. Uh, has been uh, FRC, right, for FRC, which is the First Republic Bank, uh, and Credit Suisse that I feel has been, um, you know, pretty much fighting solvency uh, all the way going back to 2007, 2008. Uh, both banks obviously having a lot, of trust, a lot of trust issues, a lot of financial issues, a lot of solvency issues. Uh, and over the weekend, you're getting some he headlines that are coming across uh, First Republic Bank now plans to uh, raise money privately. They couldn't get, even though they got an infusion of cash uh, from other banks, they couldn't get uh, anybody who physically take uh, their their uh, their holdings and their defaults and all that stuff and all that debts and assets and everything into twine and take it off the table. So they're kind of on their own. Stock is down again after the close. A lot of banks uh, are down with it. Uh, Credit Suisse, again, in its own world of hell, uh, finally coming into a little bit of resolution. They got BlackRock looking at them over the weekend. You got uh, UBS uh, for a potential joint venture there uh, over the weekend. So there's a lot of saga, man, a lot of saga, and it's taking down a lot of banks with it. I mean, you could, you could go through the whole list. It doesn't make a difference whether it's regional, uh, whether it's Main Street. They're all getting hit. It doesn't make a difference. You got uh, Bank of America, right, and it's world of hell. And then you'll have a, a smaller bank, right? Like a, a Northern Trust, which I like uh, going into this week. Not on the upside, obviously. Um, you know, you having, you having, you're, they're running the whole gamut, right? So the whole financial market looks like it's, it's in debt. Uh, everything looks horrible and the, it's the worst thing in the world. And yet, if you look at the final scoreboard, and that's kind of the whole point of all the videos uh, this week. And when you look at the final scoreboard, you have the NASDAQ up 4.4% this week, okay? Absolutely incredible move. Uh, you have the SPYs, despite majority of the S&P 500, just, just, keep, just keep an eye, just keep an, uh, just thought of this rationally. Despite a four and a half point move down on Friday, uh, the, the SPYs, SPX was still up one, one nearly 1.5% 1 for the week. That's, that's amazing considering how much exposure the banks have and all the money, all the money rotated into technology uh, going into this week. The most important part of this week will be the March 22nd uh, Fed, right? Fed announcement. Uh, initially, uh, there was dovish statements a couple of weeks back by Chairman Powell by, with his uh, two-day uh, two presentation in front of Congress. Um, you know, had a lot of dovish comments, right? Uh, excuse me, a lot of hawkish comments. Um, you know, he said, we don't know. Maybe we raised 25, 50, 75. We don't know. And then all of a sudden this banking crisis news uh, came on the forefront. And now the question is, well, not only is there potential they don't even raise rate, there's a, you know, snowballs, you know, there's a, a puncher shot. There actually could be kind of a band-aid, which is again, not a great thing for the overall spectrum, but kind of a band-aid this time around of maybe cut rates. And that's probably one of the reasons that the money flow went out of everything else in the market and went into high beta technology, right? Uh, which was an unbelievable rally this week, phenomenal rally. If if you you wouldn't he, if you traded just technology names again, if you're uh, if you're brand new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Uh, if you can be so kind, like, share, subscribe, so we can continue to give you uh, free content on a weekly basis. Uh, the point is that. These stocks are so uh, so heavily 
uh, involved with the interest rate cycle, the less interest rates are better than t- for technology. Uh, and that's why we had a big run, right? We had a big run on the speculation that, hey, not only is there probably not going to be a rate hike, but hey, there's a shot here. We cut rates as well. And everything under the sun, if you looked at these charts, you would never know in a million years uh, there was a, ba- a banking issue. AMD went absolutely nuts. Microsoft went absolutely nuts. Amazon had a phenomenal run this week. Really great run. Netflix had a phenomenal run this week. You know, Meta had a phenomenal run this week. So the question is, how long can the bulls withstand the actual, you know, reality of what's going on, right? And we talked about starting on Monday, starting you know, on Tuesday and developing to Wednesday and Thursday, going into Friday, how the bulls, they continue, right? They continue to brush off bad news. And this was a bullish thing. And that's how the kind of the week played out. And obviously Thursday, Thursday, there was no video on Thursday. You know, Wednesday, if you guys remember Wednesday going into Thursday's session, everything was starting to break out. Meta, AMD, uh, I liked, um, I liked, uh, really liked Amazon coming off the bottom of the range. And the, the point was, uh, the point was the market continued, right? Continued to brush off this bad news. And this became very, very bullish. And if you look at where the queues were on Friday versus where they were at the top of the range on February 2nd, we, we were literally, you know, we were literally a couple of bucks away from 2023 all times highs with, with all these bank uh, closures and all these banks in, in turbulence over the last week, which is absolutely amazing. That's why, again, uh, I've said this years ago, and, and I've been saying this for years, you know, going further. You know, I, I, I think the notion of the stock market is dead. I really do. I, I really do believe the notion of the stock market is dead. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a market full of stocks. Okay. It's a market full of stocks. And that's why when there's, uh, you know, when there is a, a bear market in an obvious sector, which is the bank sector, uh, there's obviously some money flow and aggression uh, going into something else. And this week turned into uh, into technology. So it's been very, very curious to see, number one, how the market sta- starts off on Monday. Uh, Friday, we had an inside day, kind of a res day uh, after this phenomenal, phenomenal four-day run uh, in the NASDAQ, again, which was uh, uh, turned out to be a 4.4% rally uh, for the week. So it really wasn't, you know, really wasn't that crazy that we got a, a very good res day on Friday. The question is, can we resume, right? Can we resume uh, all this rally in technology on Friday, or is the market going to finally turn around and say, well, I, I think we've, we've discounted this news for a week. On the banking sector, the economy really looks like crap. The banking sector is in turmoil. I, I think what happens, we start moving low, right? That's the, that's the whole theory. Now, the question is, what's going to happen, right? Are the bank stocks going to continue to pull down pretty much everything else, or is technology going to start picking everybody else and start and continue uh, to discount this bad news and the spin cycle of, of news uh, flashes that the banking sector has given us for the last uh, week and a half or so. Again, stay tuned. That's why, again, we always uh, try to be uh, try to be neutral in our thinking, uh, try to be unbiased in our opinion, and use the data uh, going into the next, next day. Not the next week, but going into the next day, prepared for the next day to make sure that we're looking at the market the right way. And again, we are prepared on the long side. We're prepared on the short side. And the question is, what's going to happen next? Obviously, to be determined. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about some levels that we definitely want to watch uh, for this week, or at least starting from Monday. Um, obviously, the Bears, you know, if, if the Bears are serious about a potential back test back to the five-day moving average, I think the Bears need to uh, reclaim 303 on the queues. And if they start building below 303, the five-day moving average after this magnificent run, um, somewhere around this, uh, you know, somewhere around this 300 level. So if the Bears... Uh, to kind of seize control on Monday. They need to get below 303 and stay there. Uh, if the Bulls want to kind of resume uh, what we started uh, last week, they're going to need to get above this 309 level and stay there. So that's basically the range. You got 309 to the upside, uh, 303 to the downside. That was Friday's channels. Uh, in between, you're just looking for individual uh, individual stock moves for individual uh, setups there. You've you found over the weekend, and that's a very important point. It, you're, you're, the day your trading day doesn't start at 9:30. Okay, uh, the next day your trading day starts uh, at the close when you start getting prepared for, uh, you know, for for the next session. So, for example, uh, I woke up this morning, seven o'clock in the morning, did my stretching, uh, you know, got a nice little walk in with my dog, 
uh, got about you know an hour worth of uh, charting, kind of looking at all under indexes, see if there's any other uh, groups that are standing out. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm prepared days, right? Now, days before uh, the open. If you're waking up at you know 9.25 in the morning and you're looking at the hot stock of the day list, you're screwed. You're dead. You, you know, you're, you're, you're living on borrowed time. So, you know, it's, it's at its at most importance uh, to make sure you are putting in a, a work, a lot of work behind the scenes. So when the lights, camera, and action and cameras start to roll, you're prepared for the day and not looking for answers, chasing everything that's moving uh, in a three cent cycle in the first 15 minutes is very, very important. So uh, that's where the cues, uh, you got the SPYs, you know, a little bit more, con you know, a little bit more crowded as you can possibly imagine with all the banks representing a huge portion of the spies. I got a sneeze at any moment, so uh, please forgive me in advance. So you have the spies, uh, had a big, big run on Thursday, big, big run on Thursday, uh, put in a high here, 39650s, right? You see that 39650s hit supply. So for the bulls to kind of keep on negating the banking news, they need to get above that 39650, 397 and start slowly start heating up back into the 50 day moving average. Uh, for the bulls to uh, give up control, the bears will need to reclaim uh, this 386. So you have 396 to the upside, 386 to the downside, and everything else in the middle is macro noise. So watch that as well. And for the Russell, you know, not acting as good as the other two groups. Uh, Russell has problems, okay? The smaller cap, uh, smaller cap representation, the speculation money uh, representation is not being demonstrated. Obviously, the, you know, the, the flight to safety is in technology, flight out of safety is into anything speculative. So the IWM here has this uh, 170 level that it's, it's held now three separate days. You see that, guys? 170, 170, 170. If the IWM starts losing 170 this week, uh, it could start a new cycle of selling. Uh, curious to see going into this week, just for individual names, uh, if we can continue, right? Apple uh, looks great. Okay, if we can start building above the top of the channel here, uh, Apple can break out. Uh, you got AMD with a massive, massive run here after the breakout here. We, you know, we highlighted this breakout, this 89 level uh, four days ago. Phenomenal move. You know, is it possible at rest this week? It should. I mean, that's uh, healthy wise. Uh, it should rest. Uh, so should NVIDIA after this phenomenal, phenomenal uh, phenomenal move. I'm going to be watching this thing for a potential, uh, I don't want to use the word backside move because it's really not a backside move, but uh, you see this little inverted hammer on NVIDIA. If it starts losing Friday's channel, I want to keep an eye on this thing for a potential back test uh, into the five-day uh, moving average. Uh, one name that just didn't participate at all uh, was Tesla, right? Tesla had a little bit of a run, caught some scalps here and there. Uh, but Tesla's sitting in a very tight channel here. You can see this four-day channel, one, two, three, four. It, it's it's stuck here between the 20-day moving average and the five. Something has to give here, right? It, something really has to give. It doesn't necessarily even have to give uh, on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It's, you know, the longer it stays in this channel, the higher probability uh, the stock will move uh, in that direction. But... Here's what I did start seeing. Uh, on Friday, we did start seeing some April uh, 170 puts come in. There was one guy who came in for 2,500 for the April 170 puts, notable about 2.5, uh, 2.7 million. We also saw some 65s uh, as well. Didn't see a lot of upside call buying uh, in Tesla this week, uh, maybe just because it is stuck. And there's nothing, it's, it's, you know, people ask me all the time, like, why isn't Tesla participating? And the reason why it's not participating is just underneath supply. You see all these lines, right? These are all supply zones. For a stock to get moving, they have to get above. So for Tesla to really get going, it would need to, you know, it would really need to close at least above 186, at least. Uh, but for this thing to get some airspace, it would need to reclaim the 91 level. But the bottom channel here, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely watching sides, uh, both sides, because if we could start losing this 150-day moving average, I think there's a shot it loses the 50 as well. And it could be uh, a lot of really good selling potential there as well, especially uh, if technology gets weaker, if they start uh, actually, uh, you know, living in reality instead of uh, negating bad uh, banking news. So there's a lot of stuff uh, on the plate uh, this week. Uh, we have... Uh, we have the Fed, we have the you know ongoing saga uh, with solvency issues with banks. Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. That's the whole point of trading. You know, you 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 have to be prepared uh, for everything. You have to be prepared for both sides of the market. But the most important part is you have to be prepared. Guys, have a great, uh, great weekend. Uh, stay in business. 
stay happy, stay healthy. And the most important part is stay alive so we can have these conversations again going into the next week. Have a great, great weekend, guys. I'll see you soon.